Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video is going to be all about friend functions and operator overloading in the context of friend functions. Specifically because I really want to take this operators here that we've been overloading and I want them to be able to access private data members of the user class, which is one of the, the parameters here. So before we jump into all that junk, let's just go through a very simple example of a friend function because we didn't actually go over the concepts of these in the previous video, so this might be all brand new to you. Well, basically the idea is we can create a function that's defined outside of a class, but it can access the private data members of the class if we grant it access. So let's talk about how to do that, but first check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So here I have this user class, and at the very end of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a friend class. And this is in the public section, so if you scroll up a little bit, you see public right here. All right, so here, we're just gonna go through a stupid example, and then we'll apply this to the operators we were working on earlier. So what we can do is we can create a function, we'll just say void, and we'll call it output status, for example. And this is going to be labeled a friend function. Now it's still going to need to take a user as a parameter, so it doesn't have direct access as in these other methods where you can just access the elements of the, the object like this. We're not going to do that, we're still going to define the user as a parameter. So that's one difference here. And then we're going to put a semicolon and we're going to put the actual definition outside of the class. So we can go after the static portion here. This was a, a static value we assigned earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to say void output status, and this is going to have the user parameter. And then inside of here, we're going to access that status, which is actually a private data member. So if you scroll up to the top, status is in here as private. Now we did create getters and setters for the status, so it would kind of make this friend function kind of useless. But let's just go through the example, pretend we don't have these getters and setters and we're not exposing this private data member. Basically, we want to create another function that can access private data members, but outside of the class. So what we're going to do is we're just going to output user.status. Now typically this would not work because it's private, but in this situation it should compile and allow us to execute this. So it does compile, awesome. So let's go to the main function, and I'm going to clear this up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a user. Now realize when we say user.status, this is not allowed. That's because it's a private data member, just to be really super clear. So let me output this and see if it works. It won't, just as a heads up. <laughs> so when we compile, you can see we get an error. It says implicitly declared private here. So we cannot access it directly. And also note that the function we created, output status, it's not a member function either. So if we call this, this is not going to work. So it says no member named output status. So output status is not defined inside of the user object. It's a standalone function. So because output status is not a member of the user object, we just call it directly. So for example, we could just say output status and pass in that user, like so. And it's a void function. We don't have to put it inside of outputs. So we'll comment that out and we'll run and see that when we execute this, we get gold. So that is your introduction to friend functions. The primary benefit is it allows us to create functions that work with users, but it doesn't pollute the list of public functions. There are plenty of arguments for and against friend functions. That's not really the point of this video. I'm just showing you how to use them and you can decide whether they're good or bad and do your extra research. Now what I wanna do is I wanna use this concept for these operators because I want these operators to be able to access the private data members of the user. So before we use the friend keyword with these operators, I just want to make it clear that if there's ever a situation where you need to access the private data members of the class, it might be best just to go through a getter and just throw that inside of here, call that function and it should work just fine. That's because you could say like user.getStatus 
or user dot set status and that would work fine but there might be a situation when you can't do that and you need to access those private data members directly so in that situation here's what we need to do first let's copy this whole thing right here and go inside of the class I'm going to get rid of this output status we're not going to need that anymore so let's just clear that off and just uh, give us some mental space I'm also going to get rid of this function we created a while ago now what I want you to do is I want you to paste that inside of the class and prefix it with the friend keyword and then put a semicolon. Now inside of main, we need to clean this up because we have this output status we are using. Let's get rid of that as well. So now when we compile, we get no errors. So we created this as a friend. Now inside of the definition, we should be able to output the status. So I'm going to output a new line and then say status and then output user.status like so. And when we compile, we get no errors. So let's give it a try inside of main. We have this user here and let's give us some data. So we assign it the first name, last name and set the status to gold. Now we first overloaded the insertion operator for output. So what we can do inside of main is just say standard C out and output the entire user like so. Compile and run. And voila, look at that, it says Caleb Curry status is gold. So we just created a friend function operator overload so that we can access the private data members. We can do the same thing for this overload here as well. So I'm gonna copy this here, and right after this friend function, we're just going to create another one like so. And make sure you end it with a semicolon. And now we should be able to get that from the input, so we'll store the next thing into user.status. So we should be able to clean up our main code by getting rid of this and just sta saying standard C in and inserting that into the user. So now let's compile and run and see if it works. So we can just say Caleb Curry and this person is a gold member. And look at that, first name Caleb, last name Curry, status gold.